video the truth about one of the best kept secrets of the whole medical industry. Imagine a world where the most widely prescribed drugs for a common condition are actually harming the very organs they are supposed to protect. Sounds like a dystopian nightmare, right? Well, this is not science fiction. This is reality. And the condition is high blood pressure and the organs are your kidneys. Hello, Catherine here. I've been working with people suffering from kidney problems for more than 10 years now. Today we talk about the most commonly used high blood pressure medications, ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, and the damage they cause to the kidneys. Yeah, you heard me right. These kidney protective medications are the first choice for doctors all around the world when it comes to lowering blood pressure, but they are not as safe as we are told. Hypertension medications, especially ACE inhibitors such as lisinopril, enalapril, and ARBs, or sardons such as losartans, valsartan, and so on, are not just the most common cause of high potassium levels. You see, because of the way they work, these medications have serious repercussions on kidney health. You see, these medications lower your blood pressure by blocking a hormone called angiotensin II, which constricts your blood vessels, so they will make your blood vessels relax. Sounds good, right? Well, not so fast, because angiotensin II also has another important function. It regulates the blood flow to your kidneys. And by blocking it, these medicines can actually reduce the amount of oxygen and nutrients that reach your kidneys. That's bad. It will lead to kidney damage. So, are the medicines that should be protecting your kidneys damaging them? Now guys, before taking any action based on what you will learn from this video, please consult your nephrologist. Keep in mind that you should never stop taking any prescription without the explicit approval from your doctor. And also I suggest you watching the whole video before making any decision at all. Because today we will take a look at which ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptors blockers are the worst. Yes, I will show you which blood pressure medication is the absolute worst, the number one most dangerous for the kidneys. And yes, there are safer alternatives. So if you are taking it, you can make sure you are being prescribed something safer at your next doctor appointment. And today we will also see who should keep taking them and who should be avoiding completely. Because you see, we all probably already know that many medications are heavy on the kidneys and we can come to terms with it. I mean, if someone is taking, for example, an antibiotic, they are usually told that it is bad for the kidneys. So, in the case of kidney disease patients, the course of the antibiotic will be as short as possible. Same with NSAIDs. Those with kidney issues are usually discouraged from taking them. But well, when it comes to ACE inhibitors and ARBs, things are more controversial. Today, several trials have been conducted to find out if kidney disease patients should be taking them at all. Okay, now you may ask, why has my doctor never told me about this? You see, when doctors give you any medication at all, they are always supposed to balance the pros and the cons, but they don't share with you their decision process. Now, the thing about that decision process is that medical science is always evolving and sometimes the cons are worse than we previously believed. So let's see what pros and cons do ACE inhibitors and ARBs have, because they do have their pros. They do protect the heart and they do reduce the chance of heart attacks and strokes. They do lower your blood pressure, obviously. And one of the main reasons why these medicines are always given to people with kidney issue is their positive effect on proteinuria. So if we look at these pros, it's clearly why these are the most commonly used medications for hypertension in those with kidney disease. 8 out of 10 kidney disease sufferers are taking one of these. But should them? So now the question is, are ACE inhibitors and ARBs actually safe for the kidneys? So as we have seen, there are various reasons why these medications are used, 
but unfortunately they also come with some serious unwanted effects. The most noticeable is hyperkalemia or too high potassium levels. Now hyperkalemia is a very serious condition which can even be fatal and you see many CKD sufferers are told that when their kidneys are not working as they should, potassium can accumulate. But that's just not true. Because only a small percentage of people with CKD who are not taking an ACE inhibitor or an ARB have high potassium levels. But this number will grow exponentially when these medicines are used. So yeah, you don't have potassium problems one day, then you start taking a medicine that's supposed to protect your kidneys, and now you have hyperkalemia. Not nice. Now the worst part, it's fairly recent news that both ACE I and ARBs are linked to more serious kidney damage than expected. Research found out that regular use of these medications leads to severe structural damage of the intrarenal arteries and arterioles, at the point that we know now that certain patients are probably better off without any ACE inhibitor or ARB. So very important question, who should take ACE I and ARBs and who should avoid them? Those in the more advanced stages, especially with a GFR below 30, are probably better off without these medications. This is what the STOP ACE inhibitors trial found out. So according to this trial, those in stage 4 and 5 of kidney disease didn't lose their kidney function at a very different rate when stopping ACE-I or ARBs, alright? ACE eyes and ARBs may also not be beneficial for people with non-diabetic kidney disease who have minimal or no proteinuria. They have not been shown to prevent end-stage renal disease in this group. On the other hand, those with diabetes and those with high proteinuria are more likely to benefit from taking either an ACE eye or an ARB. ACE eyes and ARBs should not be used together by anyone, by the way, however, because that will drastically increase the risk for side effects. Now, please don't stop taking any medication without your doctor's explicit consent. Not everyone has the same risk factors. Because as I was saying, someone with hyperdinuria level or with heart disease may benefit more from still taking ASI or ARBs than someone without these risk factors. So the next question is, if you are still going to take an ASI or ARB, which one is to be avoided? We know today that not all of these medications are the same. Some are more dangerous than others. So let's take a look at this study. This is a large study published on the British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology. And the aim was to rank ACE, I and ARBs by ROR or the percentage of adverse reaction cost. Which is this number you see here. This should be as low as possible. But as we can see, for many ACE, I and ARBs, this number is way too high. For example, lisinopril, one of the most common, has a ROR of 7.02 and I wouldn't be comfortable with that. Losartan and Olmesartan are even worse. Condesartan here seems to be the number one worst possible choice when it comes to ACE, I and ARBs, at least according to this study. So are you taking one of these medications? Do you plan to talk to your doctor about them after watching this video? Let's talk about it in the comment section. So what's the bottom line? Well, it's clear in my opinion that the possibility of discontinuing these medications must be carefully evaluated case by case. Some patients may benefit from not taking them, but it's clear that every patient must still find a way to keep their blood pressure under control. So my advice remains the same as before. Do all you can to lower your blood pressure naturally with a healthy lifestyle and diet. Be mindful of your sodium intake. Move as much as possible. Find supplements that work and that help you with controlling your blood pressure. Because you see, while it's not going to be possible for everyone with kidney disease to completely stop taking blood pressure medications, taking just one is way better than having to take two or maybe even three. Keep in mind that combining medications raises the risk for side effects and damage exponentially. So always focus on the diet, the lifestyle changes and also the supplements that work. Guys, I've talked more in depth about what really helps lowering your blood pressure naturally in my video up here 
Watch it now if you missed it. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.